In this lecture, we will discuss atrial fibrillation, including two proposed mechanisms, potential causes, EKG features, and Ashman phenomenon. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is an irregularly irregular rhythm. It results from impulses taking random chaotic pathways in the atria. In other words, in atrial fibrillation, there is chaotic firing of multiple atrial pacemaker cells in a totally disorganized fashion. Because there's no organized electrical activity, there's no effective pumping action of the atria. So what is the mechanism of atrial fibrillation? Well, it's actually not fully understood, but there are some things that we do know. We know that there must be some inciting event, such as some focal act atrial activity or premature atrial contraction, and there also must be some substrate for its maintenance, such as a dilated left atrium. There have been two main mechanisms that have been proposed. The first is the focal activation mechanism, and the second is the multiple wavelet mechanism. Let's look at both of these now. First, the focal activation mechanism. This hypothesis suggests that atrial fibrillation originates from some area of focal activity. This activity may be triggered, it may result from increased automaticity, or it may result from micro reentry. Additionally, it's been suggested that this focal activity originates oftentimes in the pulmonary veins. So if you look here, what we're seeing is this one here is our first mechanism, which is called our focal activation. And what you have here, here's our pulmonary vein, and oftentimes it originates somewhere in that region. Okay, And because of that, we're saying that we have an initiating area that just gets um, activated, irritated, and starts uh, setting off the rhythm. Okay, So this focal activation from one area is the one that's leading uh, to atrial fibrillation. Now, the second hypothesized mechanism is the wavelet, uh, multiple wavelet mechanism. This hypothesis proposes that atrial fibrillation results from the formation of multiple wandering wavelets. The fibrillation is then maintained by reentry circuits formed by some of these wavelets. This mechanism is potentiated or amplified in the presence of left atrial dilation or enlargement, as the larger surface area facilitates continuous waveform propagation. So if you look here on our left or on our right, we have this second one called the multiple wavelet mechanism, where you can see these multiple circular wavelets that are forming throughout the atria, and what you have are all of these just going in and out of each other, okay, and continuously causing these micro reentry wavelets going through and about, okay. So this is that form, and we're saying that this could be potentiated or amplified if the left atrium is dilated, okay. So if our left atrium is dilated, what this does is this larger surface area facilitates a continuous waveform propagation, okay. So left atrial enlargement uh, or dilation is something that amplifies this. So that's the two hypothesized mechanisms, okay? Again, the focal activation where we have one point setting it off, and then we have the multiple wavelets mechanism. Now, some causes of atrial fibrillation include congenital heart disease, especially if it's left unrepaired. Cardiomyopathy can be a cause, drug toxicity, and rheumatic heart disease. Now, rheumatic heart disease associated with severe mitral regurgitation was formerly a more common cause of atrial fibrillation. However, However, it is rarely seen today as management has improved. Nevertheless, it's something to keep in mind with some of your patients. Now, some reports also suggest a rare familial form as a cause of AFib. All right, so now on to the EKG features. So what can we see here? Well, on the EKG, atrial fibrillation appears as if there are no discernible P waves, and the QRS complexes are innervated haphazardly. Therefore, we said we call this an irregularly irregular rhythm. The ventricular or QRS rate or response is based on the occasional activation from one of the pacemaking sources in the atria. And it's because they are not paced by any single site, and therefore the intervals and complexes are completely completely random, irregular, and can be slow, normal, or fast. So again, we're saying there's no discernible P waves. If you look down here at a rhythm, these are no P waves that you can make out that are complete, okay? All of these throughout, no discernible P waves throughout this whole uh, rhythm strip. And we also said this is an irregularly irregular uh, rhythm, right? And actually, this is the most common of them. So what we mean by that is that the intervals between our QRS complexes, so if we take one R wave to the next, all of these R to R intervals are completely random, okay, or irregular. They're not the same intervals, okay, and we call that an irregularly irregular rhythm, okay, because what we have are these chaotic atrial pacemakers just that are just irritated and firing, and then once in a while one can get through and get to the ventricles, okay.
Now, if the ventricular response is fast, we call it atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response, or simply AFib with RVR. Intraventricular conduction is typically normal, and we will see narrow QRS complexes when present, unless there's some pre-existing intraventricular conduction delay, such as with complete bundle branch block, an accessory pathway, or rate-related aberrant conduction. Okay, so again, what we're seeing here are these narrow QRS complexes throughout, okay, remember between 70 and uh, 110 milliseconds, okay, and we see that throughout. So our QRS complexes are pretty much the same unless there was uh, one of those pre-existing intraventricular conduction delay, accessory pathway, or rate-related aberrant conduction. And we said if the response is fast, okay, so if it's a fast rate above 100, then we call this AFib with RVR, okay? So if the response rate, meaning the ventricular, the QRS complexes is fast, okay? We call that AFib with RVR. And what you would do, remember, when you take an irregular rhythm, you have to count the number. So imagine we have a 12 lead EKG, okay? Here's our 12 leads, our limb and precordial leads. Then we have maybe a rhythm strip or maybe two. And imagine we have lead two or V1 present there. What we're gonna do is take all these complexes, they're all irregular throughout, okay? And we're gonna count the number of complexes going across and multiply that by six. So why do we multiply it by six? But rem because remember, this EKG represents 10 seconds, okay? So 10 seconds times six gives us 60 seconds, which is one minute. So if you count the complexes going across, multiply it by six, that'll give you the rate in beats per minute. And we're saying if that rate is greater than 100, then we have this AFib with RVR, okay? So that's AFib with RVR, a rapid ventricular response rate. Okay, now with regards to the baseline, it can be either coarsely irregular, which we refer to as coarse fibrillation, often with the baseline amplitude greater than or equal to one millimeter in V1, or it can be finely irregular, which we refer to as fine fibrillation, typically when the baseline amplitude is less than one millimeter in V1. Sometimes a general cutoff of 0.5 millimeters is used, but either way, it really doesn't change our diagnosis of AFib. You may also hear these undiscernible waves above and below the baseline referred to as fibrillatory waves, okay? So again, let's just look at coarse and fine AFib so you know what we're saying. So this is the coarse AFib, this is the fine AFib, and we're saying that coarse AFib has, remember we're looking at V1, has an amplitude of these fibrillatory waves, which are these here, that have an amplitude of at least one of the small boxes, one millimeters, okay? And whereas we have this fine AFib, all these waves here are less than one millimeter, okay? So again, coarse, greater than or equal to one millimeter, fine, less than one millimeter. Now, sometimes atrial depolarizations, those little fibrillatory waves, may be so insignificant that no activity can actually be seen, and the baseline appears isoelectric. And in such cases, the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation can be inferred from the irregularly irregular nature of the QRS complexes, okay? So again, sometimes we can just have flat baselines here in between, so you can't see any of these fibrillatory waves, and in such cases, you want to use these R to R intervals to make and infer the diagnosis of AFib. All right, now one other thing I want to discuss with AFib is something called Ashman Phenomenon. This is a little more advanced topic, but I think you can really handle it. So Ashman Phenomenon represents an aberrant ventricular conduction due to a change in the QRS cycle duration or heart rate. In 1947, Ashman and his colleague noted that atrial fibrillation or AFib, whenever a relatively long cycle was followed by a relatively short cycle, the beat with the short cycle often had a right bundle branch block morphology. The wide complex aberrant beat following the long cycle has become known as the Ashman B and is often misinterpreted as a premature ventricular contraction or PVC. Okay, so what we have going on here is imagine we have these complexes, okay? So we have a complex here, all these throughout, and none of these R to R intervals are the same, okay? So we're dealing with AFib, so that's our underlying rhythm, is that we diagnosed AFib, and notice that these intervals are somewhat the same. Now imagine that then you had a cycle where there was a long, uh, long duration until the next beat, okay? So we have this long pause, so these ones are similar R to R intervals, okay? So we'll say similar, and then we have this long duration until the next one, all right? So we're saying after that long one, if you then have a cycle that is short, okay? So the beat then came here, this would be a short cycle. We would call this the Ashman beat. And we're saying this Ashman beat 
has a right bundle branch block morphology. And I know we haven't done bundle branch blocks, but what you'll notice and something you can remember is that these right bundle branch block have these uh, rabbit ear morphologies where we have these RSR prime complexes, okay? And these RSR prime complexes are the ones that can form and are considered this Ashman beat, okay? And pretty much you have this right, uh, the right side, the right bundle branch is, takes longer, it has a longer refractory time and we'll see and that's why you tend to see the right bundle branch block morphology. Now, this aberrant conduction depends on the relatively refractory period distal to the AV node, as we've been saying. And this refractory period depends on the heart rate, or the R to R interval. The action potential duration, that is the refractory period, varies with the R to R interval of the preceding cycle. In other words, the shorter the R to R interval, the shorter the action potential duration. And the longer the R to R interval, the longer the action potential duration. So if we look at this, okay, so we're saying if we have a complex here to this complex, okay, one R to the next, and we'll call this and then compare it to one here, notice that the one on the bottom has a longer one and the one on the top is shorter, okay? So because you have that shorter R to R interval, you're also going to have a shorter action potential duration, okay? And with this longer R to R interval, you have a longer action potential duration and therefore if there's a longer cycle or a longer r to r interval it will lengthen the ensuing refractory period however if a shorter cycle follows the longer cycle the beat ending the shorter cycle is likely to be aberrantly conducted which is the ashman beat so again one thing to note is that this right bundle branch here on the side has a longer refractory period in general compared to the left side so again we have these similar beats appearing okay and then all of a sudden we have a long beat okay if it's then followed by a short beat this tends to have this right bundle branch block morphology okay and that's called our ashman beat and if you think about it, imagine we have these similar intervals, then we have a long one. Because if it's a longer interval, we're going to have a longer refractory period. So it's going to take a longer time for this right bundle branch, okay, to um, then repolarize to take the next beat. So again, the left side is able to receive a beat, and it will depolarize, and then it will head then to the right side. So you can almost consider this almost like a right bundle branch block, and that's why it has that morphology, okay, because the right side is not ready for it, but then all of a sudden it becomes ready, and that's why we have that. So the left side will depolarize first, and then it'll head that way. And that's why maybe in V1, you would see this Ashman beat with that right bundle branch block morphology. Okay, so again, if there's a sudden lengthening of that QRS cycle, as we saw here, and again, this has to be an AFib, the subsequent impulse with a normal or short cycle duration may be conducted aberrantly. Remember, we have a relatively long cycle followed by a relatively short cycle, and the B ending the short cycle we call the Ashman B that often has that right bundle branch block morphology. Okay, so that's Ashman phenomenon, and probably a little more than you need to know, but something you can impress your colleagues with. So let's briefly review our chart to make sure we didn't miss anything. Okay, so again, AFib or atrial fibrillation is a random chaotic atrial activity. We talked about two mechanisms, the focal activation, where it's coming from one area, this here, and then we talked about the multiple wavelet mechanisms. So you have just multiple areas uh, that are kind of propagating this. We said that you need an inciting event, such as a premature atrial contraction or something else, and a substrate to maintain it. Remember, left atrial enlargement uh, is something that can maintain it as it gives more surface area to allow those wavelets right, to continue over. Some causes, we mentioned congenital heart disease, especially if it's not repaired, cardiomyopathy, rheumatic heart disease, less common today, toxicity, you can have it from alcohol, inhalants, any illicit drugs, and remember, there's a familial form also involved with this. We talked about the baseline, if it's coarse, if it's greater than or equal to one millimeter in V1, okay, so we saw that here in this area, the coarse, and then we saw fine uh, AFib where it was less than one millimeter, okay, can also be isoelectric, if it's isoelectric, Remember, you're inferring AFib through that irregularly irregular uh, rhythm, that uh, irregular R to R intervals, okay? In terms of Ashman phenomenon, we went over that. We had the aberrantly conducted beats with that right bundle branch block morphology, and that's due to that long refractory period we mentioned there, okay? And it's based on the preceding R to R interval here that we mentioned. Okay, so now just going over this, the regularity of this rhythm is irregularly irregular. Remember the most common form of this, the rate, the ventricular rates vary. It could be slow, normal, fast. If it is fast, if you have a rate above 100, we call it AFib with RVR, 
okay, rapid ventricular response. We can't make a, any P waves, so no discernible P waves present. There is no P to QRS ratio because we have no P waves we can make out, all right? And because there's no P waves we can make out, we're not going to have a PR interval. Remember, the PR interval includes that P wave up until the beginning of our QRS complex. So if we don't have that P wave present, we don't have a PR interval. The QRS interval will be normal unless there's some pre-existing intraventricular conduction delay, accessory pathway, or this aberrant conduction as we saw with that Ashman phenomenon, okay? There will be no grouping and again, no drop beats. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed atrial fibrillation, including two proposed mechanisms, potential causes, EKG features, and Ashman phenomenon. I hope you learned something.